Who Mike Brown? Who who Mike Brown? Murdered in Missouri, but we gon' rep in his town. Cops fire shots, laid his body on the ground for hours. That's the ugly face of white power and ghettos across the nation. Black bodies getting devoured. We need boys with hearts and smart warrior scholars. This nation don't listen when we holler, so we bout to link up with the fam and yeah, we coming for hours. Now that I have your attention, I'd like to share some important things with you. Hi, this video was put together and is being shared with you in an attempt to foster and promote more dialogue in the black community. In light of recent events, I know that I'm just one of many black men and women across the nation who are looking for answers and solutions in face of the challenges that are in front of us, before us. As you may know by now, a couple of weeks ago, Yet another unarmed black man was murdered in Missouri. Yes, of course, I'm referring to Mike Brown. This is after, of course, the, the death, the choking death of Eric Garner in New York. This is after the unjust death of Trayvon Martin. This is after Sean Bell. This is after Amadou Diallo was shot 41 times by police in New York. This is after Rodney King. The murder and abuse of black men at the hands of America's police forces and vigilante groups has deep roots. And right now, especially to the family of Mike Brown, I like to say that we're with you, that you're not alone, and the entire black nation is grieving with you right now. In this moment of soul searching and looking for answers, we have to be able to put these horrible deaths in their context because this, this discussion that we're having amongst ourselves and our families around our kitchen tables and our living rooms is bigger than police brutality. Black people in this country are six times more likely to be incarcerated than white people. Our unemployment is usually twice that, if not more, of the national average. And the recent economic downturn, we lost our houses more often. Our wealth was cut by at least 56%, according to some statistics. Our schools don't work in our neighborhoods. As I said, this is much, much bigger than police brutality. And the larger society's ability to ignore the conditions of black life in this, in this country and black people's continued acceptance of these conditions in this country actually stem from the same phenomenon. And that's that in spite of in addition to being the victims of slavery, the victims of white terrorist organizations, in addition to being neglected by the institutions of this country, black people are the victims of a campaign of disinformation and anti-African propaganda, which blames us, the victims, for our own victimization. For example, you will notice how the police department in Ferguson are claiming that Mike Brown might have had marijuana in his system or was possibly connected to another robbery as if that is some kind of justification for the murder of an unarmed black man. Only a people truly convinced of their own inferiority can sit by and watch the murder, oppression and destruction of their own people. Only a people truly convinced of their own inferiority can sit back and watch the destruction, murder, and oppression of their own people. I believe that the ancestors before us and the generations of black babies yet to be born are watching us right now. And the question before us is, are we so lazy? Are we so confused? Are we so distracted? Are we so spiritually bankrupt? Are we so cowardly that we don't even now have the sense to struggle for our own survival? Our experience in this country has left us denatured and, and demoralized. Generations of abject poverty, generations of injustice have shocked us out of our natural black African minds. That's why the things that seem normal to other people don't come no normal or natural to black people. That's why we don't build and sustain families to promote the healthy growth of our children. That's why we don't build black businesses to employ our own people. That's why we don't have schools that teach, out, teach us about ourselves from our own unique cultural perspective. 
That's why we don't love ourselves. But in light of these recent events, this black nation is reawakening. And we're waking up to the reality that our people face. And we're waking up to the two stark choices that are lying before us. Either we continue to accept these conditions, or we gather our minds, gather our talents, gather our resources, and start to build the institutions and the solutions that we deem fit to, to govern and, and direct the affairs of black people and help to organize our communities. But we're not just, we're not just pushing and doing things just to say that we're doing something. Because the real black men and women amongst us have decided and we're already moving. But we're not just doing things for action's sake. A brief re review of the history of the institutions and systems in this country will reveal that they were built in, a, in the context of a larger culture of white supremacy. And as a result, no matter their stated reasons for being, as they go about their official work, they can't but help to maintain white power and white privilege in the lives of black people. The assumption of black inferiority is so ingrained in the society that through its institutions, this nation unconsciously creates conditions for our people which meet its low expectations and low assumptions of us. Therefore, it is clear that whatever we build, whatever actions we take, must be based in our own culture and our own worldview and a promotion of our own well-being. Because culture is everything. Culture is a people's collective personality. It determines which behaviors they will tolerate within them, within their group, among the individuals within their group, and what type of treatment they will accept from individuals outside of their group. Culture is a people's collective blueprint. It determines how the people build and organize their families and communities. Culture, as we can see, is destiny. That's why no matter where you go in the world and you find Chinese people, you will find them as shopkeepers and owners. Every major city in this country has a Chinatown. And that's not because somebody sat down each individual Chinese person and told them to start a business, but their culture instructed them to do so. Same thing with the Jewish community here. Wherever you find a Jewish community, you'll find a Jewish community center. Again, not because someone convinced them that they needed to build, but their culture deemed it necessary. And wherever you find black people, you find us running from ourselves, running from our history, running from our culture in an attempt to find favor and find mercy with other groups. This is a recipe for disaster. That's the formula for, for another Katrina. That's the plan for more Trayvons and, and more Mike Browns. That's the road to genocide. Therefore, brothers and sisters, if we are to avoid that ultimate tragedy, it is clear that we must become as black as we can get. Yes, we must wrap ourselves within ourselves. Our blackness should be more than our race. It should be our armor. It should be our roadmap. Our blackness should be our promise. It should be our hope. It should be our bond. Because the success and the actions of other groups proves to us that the very thing that we're being attacked and killed for, our blackness, in the end shall be our only salvation. But in order to ensure our people's safety, in order to promote our own positive development and defend our humanity, we must first rid ourselves of our own belief in black inferiority. We must admit that as a people, we are wholly ignorant of ourselves, our tra traditions, and our history. They've all been presented to us through the lens and from a perspective of a people who have never understood us and who have never had our best interests at heart. So I say let us open our minds, let us open our hearts, our souls to our true selves and our true history. And through that process we will witness the redemption of our people not only in this country but in black communities all over the world. Now many people can, can point out the problems. But it's rare that you have someone who presents um, a plausible solution to the things that we're facing. And I want to be clear that this, that, that this isn't that. This 
is the revolution. This is that change. This is that that campaign for black dignity and black black justice that we've all been waiting for. And if you would have our communities be safe, if you would have our people be employed, if you would have our businesses be more successful, if you would end the glorification of violence and drugs in our community, if you would want an end to the murder and incarceration and abuse of black men and boys by these police, if you would have black women and girls respected and defended as opposed to being disrespected and treated like prostitutes, then you have a right, you have a duty to join us. Your people need you. And your joining us doesn't require you to march in some protest. Your joining us doesn't require you to attend some meeting. All you have to do at this point right now is to make one small commitment. And that commitment is to look every black person you meet in your day-to-day -day journeys in the eye and greet them. Like my grandma used to tell me, we need to act like we have some home training. So that means saying good morning, good afternoon, good evening. How are you? What's up? Even one of those is enough to suffice. Now let me explain that we're doing this for two reasons. First, we need to cultivate as individuals the habit of making individual decisions in our own personal lives that will benefit and profit the larger black collective. You as an individual are not powerless. Enough of us making the same individual decision have made a group decision. And also we can't deny that the media portrayal of black people is criminality. Uh, it's over representation of black lawlessness affects us just as it affects other groups. And we can't come together if we're afraid of each other. So let us get rid of this, this, this atmosphere of fear and use it to come together and hope and, and unity and get about the business of putting our people back together. Now mind you, this is called the Black Solutions Challenge. And this is just the first step and the first stage and the first phase of our campaign for greater justice, prosperity, and unity and power amongst our people. So do your part. Talk to your brothers and sisters as you meet them. Share this video. And we'll get back at you in the next week or so and continue to talk about solutions. We will change this thing. Thanks for listening. Peace and power.